today what we uh, wanted to give to you is to show you how else you can be able to manage your diabetes and hypertension with diet. But remember, we manage diabetes. We don't treat diabetes or hypertension. We just manage it. And management is a multi-stakeholder type of management. I'll give you medication as a practitioner. I'll advise you, you need nutritional counseling. I'll advise you need psychological counseling, but I will not be able to do it. That is why we use other practitioners to be able to give this information to uh, you as the patient. So without further ado, I'm going to allow uh, Willie Kibet to start his uh, presentation uh, where he will talk about management of, uh, actually nutritional management of diabetes and hypertension. This is really critical for anyone who has or uh, who has diabetes or hypertension or who knows somebody who suffers from diabetes and hypertension. And during this time that uh, we are not having enough uh, uh, health educations in the facilities, uh, this is one of the medium that we can give you this information so that you are able to actually practice what should be done uh, or, or get the proper um, management that you need to have at home so that you are able to manage yourself. Remember at Sasa Doctor, we uh, um, privy ourselves to giving you quality healthcare. And quality means we have to give you a whole some uh, approach, not just the medical side, but also the nutrition side and the mental health side. So without further ado, Willie, kindly take it away. Uh, good afternoon to you all. can't hear you. Um, yes. I think you're still on me. Now we can hear you. You can share your screen and proceed. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Willie Kibet. I'm a nutritionist by profession. And remember, once we begin, nutrition is key. So we need to take up our role and act now. So today I'll be taking you through nutrition management for diabetes and hypertension. And as we all had, this is our lifestyle diseases that is caused by various situations and majority beginning with this will have to know the objectives of this uh, data management for diabetes and hypertension we must understand how to manage hypertension and diabetes condition through our daily diet get to know how to plan one meal um, diabetes mellitus i will give you a definition diabetes mellitus is a chronic metabolic disorder characterized by sustained elevated blood glucose, that is called hyperglycemia, resulting from defects in insulin, secretion, actions, or both. Diabetes, if not well controlled, lead to serious complications, resulting in multiple disease or disorders that affect multiple body organs, resulting to an increased morbidity and premature death. Uh, we have principles of dietary management. First of all is to achieve ideal and desired weight, an appropriate diet and exercise regime. Remember, you have to have a certain BMI that is between 18.5 to 24.9, so as to avoid this uh, lifestyle disease. Three main meals should be eaten in a day uh, and binds eating should be avoided. 
that should be individualized based on traditional eating patterns, BMI, commodity conditions, and should, and should be palatable and affordable to everyone. Animal fats sold, diet drinks, sweeteners, and food marketed as diabetic food should be avoided. So sometimes we may get branding just to make sure that we are trying to sell things that cannot be good for you. So you have to look for the best food that can help you manage the diabetes. Tailoring the nutritional intervention so that there's a careful match of board meal planning approach and education materials with the patient needs and so that they feel some allowance for flexibility in terms of how you plan your diet or whatever kind of food that you want to put on your table. Food and drinks rich in refined sugars should be avoided. Uh, eating plan should be higher in complex carbohydrates. That is our starches and fiber content. So complex means that uh, these are the food that take long time to be digested in the body and hence releasing your sugar slowly by slowly because by the end of the day, uh, at certain given in time, your body needs specific amount of sugars. So that is the reason why we are encouraging the complex carbohydrates to make sure their digestion takes longer period to be digested and the body will utilize your sugars or glucose appropriately. Uh, things we need to avoid, avoid diet drinks. Uh, we have sodas, Coke Zero. Those are the ones that you are mentioning about the diet uh, drinks. Uh, vegetables and limited number of fruits should be encouraged because remember vegetables are high in fiber and also the fruit contain fiber. Um, food quantity should be measured in volumes using available household items such as carbs or be countable, such as number of fruits and slice of yam or bread. Reason for this because when you eat too much, the, the end product will be glucose in the body and will end up maybe having uh, blood sugar on your blood that is higher than what the body requires. And that means that your sugar level will rise above the normal. Alcohol should be avoided because remember alcohol, uh, they are empty calories. So their sugars only, uh, they are random. They're not utilized by the body and this will increase your sugar level. Sweeteners are not essential and should be avoided as much as possible. Drinking water through the day, should be encouraged because water increases the rate of your metabolism and hence the body is able to utilize uh, energy from food in appropriate way. So please take a lot of water because it is essential for our body functionality. Uh, dietary, man dietary code recommendation in management of uh, uh, type two diabetes, follow a healthy balanced eating plan. So a healthy uh, balanced eating plant means that you have carbohydrates, you have protein, you have vitamins, you have uh, minerals. That is what it means by a healthy balanced eating plant. Eat a variety of fresh food and vegetables every day, but avoid fresh juice. What you mean by fresh fruits is you take the fruits that are from the shamba, that means uh, the oranges. We have avocado, we have... Um, we have apple, we have pineapple, but always make sure that you count whatever you are eating. And in terms of the vegetables, we mean the skooma, we mean uh, spinach, cabbage, we have the broccoli, we have, we have kauri flour, we have our traditional vegetables. Now we need to avoid fruit juices because our packet fruit juices mostly, they contain uh, added sugars. That is the reason why we don't recommend intake of packed juice. So try as much as possible to have your fresh juice. You can blend your own, but don't, don't mix. Only have one at a go. Uh, use a variety of meat alternatives, including, uh, including beans and other legumes. At least half of the grain intake must be from whole grain products. Because if we go to food that are processed, remember the fiber content or the roughage is not there. And hence, it will, the, the digestion will be quicker and uh, there will be impact or immediate release of sugar. And that can be too much from your body and hence uh, increasing your blood glucose level. Uh, consume white meat at least twice a week. 
because you know white meat they are not saturated at least that one can be absorbed well but our red meat are saturated and it contain fat so it takes long time to be broken down in the body system limit the intake of processed and fast food because most of the processed food they have added sugar the fast food are high in fat content and you can realize if the body has a lot of fat then the utilization of carbohydrates will be hindered increase intake of water to meet the daily fluid requirements in terms of water remember the bigger or the higher weight you have the more you need to take water but the one who are slim the recommended one is around 12 glasses per day but as your weight is increasing make sure you increase water intake because that is what is needed by our metabolism to function properly uh these are just a, a picture of fruits and vegetables that you can get from uh from the market and it's quite appealing so you can make your own at home and that one will be the best rather than go and buy the packaged one at our supermarket uh now we learn about carbohydrates carbohydrate is the food that give us energy in the body so when we eat too much uh the sugar levels will go up because the end product is glucose this food group has the largest effect of blood glucose level because when they are digested carbohydrates are broken down into glucose that is sugar carbohydrates consist of sugars and starches and are important energy source for the body and brain however in diabetes it is important to choose the right carbohydrates that help control blood glucose levels Carbo choose carbohydrates with the low GI that is the glycemic index. Uh, GI refers to the rate at which glucose is released from a food. Food that have a low uh, glycemic index releases glucose slowly and are the best types of carbohydrates to eat for diabetes. Uh, starchy foods with a low GI include porridge, we have pasta, we have pulses, nodules, and whole grain. So you must choose the one that they are not processed. So when you go to make sure, when you are going to supermarket to purchase something, sometimes you have to look for a holy grain, but not the one that are refined. So if you are doing like Kugali, don't go for the, the grade one. It's better you go to the one that from the portion meal, because that one at least you can get the fiber content is very high. So their digestion take a long period of time. Uh, that is an example of carbohydrates. We have bread. We have uh, wheat products are there. We have the crisps. We have rice. We have potatoes. We have macaroni. Those are just but an example. Uh, protein and fat content. Protein should be uh, should make up about fifteen to twenty percent of your total energy intake. In type two diabetes, ingested protein can increase the insulin response with without increasing plasma glucose level therefore a protein should not be used in treatment and prevention of hypoglycemia remember protein contain a chemical compound called chon so if you restrict your energy level the, pro the protein will produce will give energy not even energy building so that means that when you don't use protein uh to treat maybe or to prevent hypoglycemia because it cannot give you sometimes you need to give the protein the work itself of uh body repair and muscle building um so that means that we take and in protein we refer to the ones like uh, we have uh, poultry that is chicken we have fish at least the white meat uh also uh protein is inclusive of the beans the plant legumes that is the beans the lentils the dengue the peas those are example of protein and also the dairy product uh fat content the fat intake should be restricted uh below to below 35 percent of the total energy intake the saturated fat that is solid fat and animal fat intake should be restricted to around 70 less than 7% of the total energy intake. Most of the fat intake should be unsaturated. That is, for example, the vegetable oil. Two more serving of fish per week will provide the recommended omega-3. In terms of saturated fats, what we normally recommend is uh, we have the monounsaturated, that is the olive, we have canola, 
we have inaps, those are the ones that they are good. Uh, the second option that you can do is uh, polyunsaturated. That means we can include the sunflower, the elianto, the coconut oil. Uh, those are better rather than have something that is hydrogenated like kimbo or margarine or butter. Those are the ones that we try as much as possible to restrict. So go with the monounsaturated and the poly, but not the saturated fats. Um, in terms of the fish, we need to increase our omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, because those are the best thing that can help us in making sure that we control our blood sugar levels. So at least two serving of fish per week is recommended. Uh, those are just a pictures of protein. Uh, we have egg, we have milk, we have chicken, we have uh, beef, and uh, we have uh, the plant legumes that is the beans, the lentils. Those are just but an example that you need to include in your meal. At least those ones, uh, for example, the plant protein, they have fiber content, and this fiber content takes long time to be broken. So when you input on your diet, it's always better because you can control your sugars. Uh, salt, vitamins, and alcohol. Salt. Limit all kinds of salt intake, especially those that we normally add on the table. Because when you're making a meal, try as much as possible to put just at least um, the little that you can, but don't add the, the, the table salt. Please, we don't recommend because sodium uh, will impact the uh, utilization of that energy from the carbohydrate. So you try so much to limit the intake. Uh, vitamins and minerals. Mineral and vitamin supplementation may be needed in selected groups, such as the elderly, lactating and pregnant women, and the uh, and the vengeance. Uh, in supplementation, please let's avoid the one that you go to the counter and ask for supplement. It's better for you to do uh, to do maybe uh, a test to confirm which are the kinds of the vitamins you need. But in terms of the elderly, because as we age, uh, remember that we, our hormonal imbalances, so the uptake of nutrient or the absorption of nutrients is much limited. And for lactating mothers and pregnant women, they need of additional supplementation because remember you are feeding two people. So that's why you have to increase uh, vitamins and minerals in your diet and also for supplementation. Also, we encourage to take variety of fruits and vegetables, fish and food rich in vitamin D. So that means that uh, let's have uh, vegetables, especially the traditional vegetables, those are best ones. You can also do the European one that is uh, the broccoli, the celery, the cucumber. You can have fruits like um, green apple, we have apple, we have the berry family, we have the kiwi, we have the avocado, we have the citric family. Those are the kind of the foods that we encourage. Alcohol. Adults who choose to consume alcohol should do so in moderation. One unit per day or less for women and two units per day or less for men. The question comes our alcohol. Remember, if you do the guineas, they are high in, they're high in calorie content. Uh, if you do the whiskey, just like 45 ml of whiskey, give you around 116 calories. Uh, so that means that if you do like one uh, around uh, 90 ml, you already surpass what you need for lunch. So try as much as possible to regulate. And if possible, you can avoid that will be the best. But if you can, try to moderate the intake. Moderate alcohol consumption with food does not cause acute hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia. Individuals on insulin or insulin secretaneous should be aware of the risk of delay hypoglycemia for up to 24 hours after consumption. Alcohol should be consumed with food to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia. Remember, we say that alcohol doesn't sustain anything. The sugar from the alcohol does not help you in your daily activities. So that means it doesn't give you energy to do a physical exercise. It doesn't support growth or it doesn't support anything. So that is the reason why you, uh, if you take alcohol, that sugar levels are not, it, it cannot be absorbed by the body or being utilized. And that is, uh, you are at high risk of going hypoglycemia. That means that your sugar levels are below the normal. So try as much as possible not to depend on alcohol. Uh, so that is a picture, take alcohol in moderation. 
and try as much as possible to limit the intake. Uh, we have our plate model in, in diabetics. It divides the plate, nine each inches in diameter, into portion of vegetables. We have fruits, we have starch, and it divides the plate. Nine inches in diameter, the portion of vegetables, fruits, starch, and protein in this case, below as indicated. So we have uh, a plate concept method where we say that maybe half of the plate will be fruit and vegetables, because remember, vegetables and fruit are low in sugar. And also you have to be keen in terms of the choosing uh, the vegetables. Remember, if you are hypoglycemic, that means your sugar level is below the normal, you can have a banana, and that one will be a, a, a quick impact in terms of uh, regulating your sugar levels. And uh, vegetables, they are high in fiber content. So their digestion is a bit slow. So it will release sugar slowly by itself, and that gives you the body to utilize that energy in appropriate way. Uh, in terms of the cereals, we give it uh, a quarter of the plate, that is the bread and other cereals such as potatoes, we have arrowroot, we have cassava, we have ugali, we have brown rice. So you limit to around a quarter. Then we have milk and dairy food that is like one eat. So don't be dependent so much, but the best advice that we can do, we go with the skim milk because already there's an elimination of the fat content. But if you can get, you can use the normal one, but you regulate yourself to let around 250 uh, millimeter, uh, ml per day. That one is a bit better, but don't overdo it. Then we have food containing fats and food containing sugars. So we should limit, especially the sugary foods. For example, we have a cup of tea and you have added maybe like, uh, maybe three teaspoons of sugar. That one would be too much. Another option is we have the sodas. Sodas like a 300 ml can give you around uh, 12 teaspoons of sugar in it. So that is the reason why when you're going to take that soda, you have to reason this what amount of sugar does, does the body need it really. If it doesn't need it, then don't take it. At least try as much as possible to avoid it. Another thing is about food containing fat. That is, for example, if you go to town, you have the fast food like the fries. Fries, when you take, for example, a quarter, a quarter will give you time. If you make a gram of carbohydrates gives around four calories. So if you take a quarter that's like 250 uh, grams, it will give around a thousand calories. Uh, so when you add with the one from the fat content, let's say around 30 grams, you get time is nine, that is the calorie, one gram of fat. Uh, give you around nine calories that will be 270 so already by having that chips or fries like a quarter will give you around 100 270 calories so that one is almost enough for your day so when you are going to uh, cheat day remember how much calories are you consuming so if you are somebody who goes for fries then you have to be keen how do i remove this kind of uh, things it's better even you go and eat real food rather than have this kind of uh, food containing fats. Now, meat, fish, and alternatives. We say that we need to moderate the intake, but the best one is to have at least um, a white meat uh, two, two times per serving, maybe in a week. So you have to be concerned in terms of the plate concept method. And again, sometimes don't take your plate and go and say that this is what I'll be using every day. No. Remember, by the end of the day, you are used to specific amount of food. So the only limit, try to increase your vegetables, try to reduce your carbs by a quarter of whatever you have been eating on a daily basis, and then try to moderate on your protein, and that one will work best. So you don't be constant, don't be constant in terms of plate concept method. So don't go and purchase a plate and say, this one is the amount that I'll always be eating. Sometimes can be too much and sometimes can be uh, too little. So you have to know how to manage what kind of the meals you are eating at specific time. Uh, so we are done with the diabetics and I believe you have learned something. So we get to the second topic of today, that is hypertension. This is the high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to talk about the artery management of hypertension. Remember, it is a lifestyle disease. And if we control with food, then it will be easy. If you prevent it with food, then it will be easy. 
So we say that we have a definition of hypertension, which is a condition in which the force of the blood against the artery was is too high. Uh, usually, hypertension is defined as blood pressure above 140 over 90. And it's considered severe if the pressure is above 180 stroke 120. So high blood pressure often has no symptoms. Over time, if untreated, it can cause health conditions such as a heart disease and a stroke. So you may find somebody uh, collapsing and then you wonder what's the problem, but you never realize that this person may be going to, uh, has blood pressure. So when it is on a high, you can collapse and then so we better prevent you. And sometimes you can get somebody having a stroke. Reason for that, because maybe one of the blood vessels that was supplying um, blood to the certain part of the brain is closed. Uh, there's a fat deposition around there. So it will prevent the blood circulation. And this will make either the blood vessel to rupture or to prevent the flow of uh, blood circulation throughout your body. And that will cause the stroke. So you should try as much as possible to check our pressure every time you are at the clinic. Or even uh, we have various chemists there you can go and check because we have had it from there, you cannot know the symptoms. It has no symptoms. So over time and time, please go and check. Um, the most key things that we try to manage in this is by limiting salt, but that will help lower your blood pressure, which can reduce the chances that you will have a heart attack or stroke. Why are we limiting uh, salt? Remember, salt is sodium. Even if you are taking medication for your blood pressure, you should still limit how much sodium you consume. Increase sodium intake sleep to increase intravascular volume, and that increases cardiac output by elevating blood pressure. So try as much as possible to limit, especially the added salt. And if you can eat your meals without salt, the better when you're having high blood pressure. Uh, these are the tips that you can use to cut the sodium intake in general. Food with more than 300 milligrams of sodium per serving may not be fit into your meal plan. You can find out how much sodium is in food by reading the food label. Remember, most of the things that you can get from supermarket, there's a nutritional fact on that uh, bottle or a packet. So you can go through there, look at the labels, the, uh, the sugar levels, the carbohydrates, the fat content, the sodium, the magnesium, and any other thing. But when you find that it is on high than recommended, please don't buy that one. Remember the amount listed is for one serving, which may be more or less than you eat. Do not salt food at the table. That is the main concern. We as Africans, we love so much to add the table, uh, salt on the table, and that one is very bad. It's better to add it the time that you are, you are cooking. So add very little when cooking. Choose careful when you are away from home. Restaurant food can be very high in sodium. Let the person taking your order know that you are uh, looking for low salt or no salt. Because sometimes, remember, in restaurants, you are making the food to be appealing. And the question is, always know it's better something that you know than something that you don't know so always if you, the best way is you can tie your food whenever you are going anywhere the better but if you can't then you have to give orders when you are at the restaurant moderate restrict moderate restriction of sodium reduces the diastolic pressure by six to ten millimeters and enhance and enhances blood pressure so that is clear you have to know that salt uh, when you have high blood pressure, should be limited or taken in moderation. So those are the key things about the salt intake. Now we go, now we go to fats and weight. Remember, eating the right types of fat and avoiding the unhealthy one help to reduce the buildup of plague in your blood vessels. This lower your risk for stroke and heart attacks, and that is the reason why we say that you have to choose. Um, uh, the unsaturated fats. For example, we say about olive, we say about canola, we have sunflower, we have coconut, we have elianto, those are the better ones. So we try to avoid the ones like the margarine, the butter, because those are the ones that can cause uh, deposition of the fat around our blood vessels. And this eating plan includes healthy 
uh, heart healthy kind of fat either it limited it limits saturated and trans fatty mostly saturated the one are the one that high generated for example the margarine the butter uh, the kimbo one so try as much as possible to limit and um, if you're using uh, for example the fresh fry the arena please minimize the quantity because they are both they are vegetables yes but they are saturated so try as much as possible to be the ones that you mentioned earlier maintaining a healthy weight is key remember when you're obese uh, the increased likelihood of having lifestyle condition is very high so you try as much as possible to manage your weight then by the end of the day it depends on your height so for example if you have a night of 170 you are not supposed to weigh more than 72 kgs so that's a bmi of less than 24.9 so always try as much as possible to be within the normal bmi that is 18.5 to 24.9 so because um healthy weight or the right BMI you are at, you are not at risk of having these diseases. But again, sometimes you may find somebody who is slim and uh, that person has high blood pressure and you are wondering ask yourself what happened. It's because we have this something called the visceral fat. If you build the inner, uh, the inner fat content around the vital organs in the body, that means even if you are slim, you can get that diabetes. So always as much as possible, try to exercise, try to manage your weight, and also try to avoid uh, fatty food or junky food. Uh, as your body weight increases, your blood pressure can rise. Lose weight if you are overweight. To lose weight, you need to eat fewer calories than you burn. Uh, that means... Uh, Eating time is always important. So sometimes we say that our metabolism is very effective early in the morning due to overnight fasting. As the day goes by, the metabolism starts going down. So the best time to have a heavy meal is early in the morning. The best time to have a very light meal is towards the end of the day. So for breakfast, that will be the best time to eat your heavy portion. At lunchtime, uh, try as much as possible to reduce the portion. So that means you have to reduce your carbohydrates by half or whatever you had in the morning. And direct your protein and double up your vegetables. And for dinner, you have an option of having a vegetable or you can have a vegetable plus a fruit. Uh, so that at least you try to remove the carbs or the uh, or too much protein towards the, end, towards the time that you are adding to sleep because you have to take advantage of your metabolism and it is very effective to have a heavy meal. But towards the end of the day, please try as much as possible to control your calorie intake. Um, take, talk to your doctor uh, about what healthy weight is for you. Head goes to the target weight. Um, a nutritionist also can help you uh, make a plan to get regular physical exercise because by the end of the day, you need to remove the inner or the, uh, the body fat that you have incurred during your time. So you need to do an exercise, a physical one is always be good. You can include the running, you can also include swimming, you have bicycle riding, you have uh, mostly the cardio exercise are always key. Uh, limit your weight maybe after you achieve your target, that is the time you can build muscles. But the main key things you can have exercise in the house, do your skips, do your squat, uh, walk, and um, and maybe you can do swimming once in a time. This one will help in regulating your weight. And uh, I've reached the end of my presentation and I'm really grateful. Remember the point to take at home is your diet is everything. Remember that plate of yours that you eat at home, uh, a quarter is helpful for you, but the other one is helpful for nutrition. So try as much as possible to take up the role, eat healthy, live healthy. And I say thank you so much. If you have any question, we'll be right here. Thank you so much. Dr. Thank you very much, uh, Kibet, uh, for that uh, wonderful presentation. And uh, uh, with the people who are watching, kindly, if you have questions, uh, just put them on the Q&A section. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to engage more, Willie. Um, you can stop sharing your screen. Um, so there is something that you just said uh, uh, almost at the end of your presentation is that uh, we need to take a higher portion in the morning. 
and uh, with a higher portion in the morning, you want us to eat like lawyers. Eh? <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> I would like you to elaborate on that because uh, most people will take a lighter breakfast and a heavy meal in the evening. So we need to demystify that. How, how best can we uh, ensure that um, uh, we get uh, uh, people to take a heavy meal in the morning? How else are they going to plan their meals? And by the way, for anyone who's at, uh, attending this webinar, uh, Willy Kibet is one of our practitioners. And if you need a correct meal plan, you can contact, uh, you can use the application and uh, see the doctor. Uh, or the, the nutritionist, and then from there, they will be able to advise you on a proper meal plan. It's really essential if you are suffering from diabetes or hypertension to come on and uh, get proper guidance. Don't guess, don't guess. You, this is, uh, we're making this accessible to you. Just go in and uh, ask the, the, the professionals. So really, uh, if you can demystify that. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, having a meal, the heaviest portion in the morning. Remember, we need to take advantage of our metabolism when it is very effective. And considering due to overnight fasting, our metabolism in the morning is very effective. And that we give a recommendation of having a heavy breakfast. The reason why we, we just have to maneuver in a way, remember we build a lifestyle or something, a habit over a period of time. So the question is, if I can reduce my ugali at dinner by a quarter on every day and bring it to be breakfast, then uh, I'll be forced to have a meal in the morning. If I remove my carbohydrates, maybe that ugali portion at dinner, a quarter of them, then try as much as possible to bring in the morning. So with, uh, with going with sometimes, maybe you give yourself a period of one week, you'll realize that you are eliminating almost all the carbs for dinner and bring it in the morning. So for breakfast, I have an idea of what you can incorporate on your diet. So the first one is your heaviest portion, that is real food. The food that you are supposed to have for dinner, have it in the morning. So for example, I can have my rice, my chicken, and a vegetable. I can have my ugali, my uh, uh, fish, plus a vegetable as the first meal of the day. The second option is we need to, as much as possible, to reduce our or moderate the intake of our wheat products that is uh, the bread, the chapati, the mandazi, uh, biscuits and cakes. The reason for that gluten slows your metabolism down. So that means that uh, if you take that one, you have to be very active. So taking that gluten or the wheat products, you need to do a double exercise so that at least you can increase your metabolic purposes. But if you can, sometimes you can say that once in a while, uh, I need to be doing the wheat. And the other days I can try as much as possible to incorporate something like uh, the complex carbohydrates. Ideally, for example, we can have something like a sweet potato, we can have arrows, we can have cassava, we have yams, we have boiled maize, we have roasted or baked potato, we have the lentils, we have plantain, that is mokimo, and we have, um, we have matoke. Those are options that you can have as the second option. And uh, another option can be a boiled egg, but not more than four in egg because of the cholesterol purpose. And also we can have cereals that is oat and complex. Those are better, but not more than three times in a week. So that means that if you incorporate those one, at least you have like four, four, four things to do in the morning. So you can try as much as possible to fix your diet. I know mostly we like quick fix. That's why we go for a cup of tea and some slices of bread. So try as much as possible to do food. By doing that, eliminate your dinner, just cut on your carbohydrates and bring it in the morning. In one week time, the body will be used to. Now, when you go to dinner, uh, try to cut back on your protein and uh, especially the carbohydrates, try to reduce it by a quarter on a daily basis. So that means for dinner, we have a vegetable as the first option. We have a vegetable plus food as the second option. And the third option will be always uh, some moderate amount of animal protein, as a vegetable but if you are hungry and you know that you cannot sustain that one then you can add a little amount of carbohydrates for example the ugali and for example uh, the rice but at line time you have to challenge yourself remember by the end of the day at line time you have to know because at line time we deal about um, portion control so that it means that my heaviest portion should be in the morning then at line time i have to reduce by half of whatever i eat in the, in the morning 
So reduce moderate your protein and double up the vegetables. The second thing is food combination. Uh, food combination because it's very key. Sometimes you may think that we are eating healthy, but we're increasing the sugar levels in our body. So having a uh, food combination for thought is key. So when you're having uh, something like uh, starch, that is a carbohydrate, for example, rice, for example, ugali. So please don't mix with plant protein because plant protein are high in carbs itself than the protein itself. So if you're doing the plant protein, please, it's good to combine with a vegetable, but not with any starch, for example, like rice beans. When you're having rice, please do, uh, please do, uh, when you're having rice, please do with uh, an animal protein, just moderate the intake plus a vegetable. And when you're having a uh, plant protein, please eat with a vegetable. Thank you so much. I hope you have answered you, Frank. Uh, okay, thank you, Willie. Um, something else that uh, I would like to talk about a bit um, as we are heading to the end of, the pre of uh, this webinar is that <clears throat> for myself, uh, when I see my patients, uh, for, especially for hypertension, there is uh, what uh, usually comes up as um, when you tell them to limit sodium, for instance. You tell them to limit the sodium that they are taking in, and uh, they ask you, will we take tasteless food? And um, from what uh, Willie presented is uh, that uh, <clears throat> you, are able, you can be able to control the, or limit the salt or the sodium that you're going to take. And uh, I usually tell my patients this, um, when you take a lot of sodium, uh, this is simple uh, science that we are taught, I think, in primary school. You are retaining more fluid in your system. That is what uh, Kibet was uh, talking about. Uh, there is a, a lot of retention or incre increase in intravascular volume of blood. That ensures that uh, uh, your blood pressure goes high. So it's really important for us to be able to reduce that um, blood volume and hence be able to manage your hypertension better. Now, something else, using diet is not um, an, <clears throat> an alternative. It's not uh, like uh, we are replacing diet with medication. You have to take your medication if you've been put on medication and you also have to control your diet. So the target of uh, uh, management of hypertension is usually we want to prevent complications because we know diabetes and hypertension cause complications. And these complications are what we suffer from and eventually end up with uh, 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 other problems. For instance, if you, because there is what we call target organ, organ damage. With the target organ damage, you are damaging your, either your kidneys or your uh, pancreas or your uh, um, um, eyes, et cetera. So, it's really important for us to be able to control using many uh, modalities. And as I said, hypertension and diabetes management, it's not a one-sided thing. It has to have a multi-stakeholders or a multidisciplinary approach. That is why we brought you this topic of uh, diabetes, uh, uh, nutrition in management of diabetes and hypertension. And um, I've not seen any questions so far. Um, if you have a, a question and you wanted to ask, uh, we have a few minutes. We have like um, eight or nine minutes to finalize this. If you have any question, you can raise your hand and then we can allow you to talk. Uh, if any of our practitioners wants to put in uh, some more input, Awanjiro Nyambura, do you have anything you wanted to say? Let me know. Yes. Uh, hi, um, I just an addition. Uh, I know I won't speak after this. We're just going to end the webinar. Uh, there are just a few simple points that I wanted to emphasize on. And one of them is um, the most important part of your diet. Everything is important, but you have to make sure. I know our fruit and vegetable intakes are very, very low. That is something that you need to check on. When it comes to salt intake, especially the sodium, the summer will go wrong. You find that I only consider the salt that I'm putting on, that you are kwa food. But remember, 
if you're using spices, if you're using uh, soy sauce, remember it has salt in it. If you're using the, the Royco cubes, remember it also has salt in it. If you're using so many things, so many processed things have salt in it and they all have different, uh, different concentration of salt. So you also have to factor that in, in as much as you're uh, checking your salt intake. Because you find I've put salt, I've also put soy sauce, especially soy sauce has very, very high salt in it. So you need, I feel like when you eat, you have diabetes and at the same time you have hypertension, you have to turn into a bit, you have to do a bit of mathematics. So come up, mathematics wasn't a thing for you. You need to learn how to do it because you need to check everything you buy for the salt content, you need to check for the fat content, you need to check for the sugar content, you also need to check for the carbohydrates and all that so that you're sure because right now in Nairobi not everybody is able to afford to is able to access to whole grains or all things that are not processed so when you're buying processed things you have to factor in the dietary requirement that's why you see you need to have a nutritionist you need to factor in your dietary requirements at the end of the day if it's calories how much do you need what target do you need by the end of the day if it's fat how much if it's salt how much so you need to factor that all in. even when you take a bag of uh crepes you need to check how much salt is in it because some of the crepes have very very high salt intake they are salt in it and also they have very very high sugar in it so you also have to factor that in. And reading the food labels, that has to become one of your friends because you need to check, ah, this has a lot of salt. I don't think this will work well for my diet. Also, this has a lot of sugar. I don't think this will work well for you. So when in the supermarket, before purchasing anything, you need to read the ingredients and how much they, they contain and also compare with your daily limits. When it comes to... There are some things that are, we see in commercials that uh, there's Coke Zero for diabetic people. I don't know what else is there for diabetic people. Kindly take precautions. There's no Coke Zero, which they say has no sugar and it's sweet. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to beat the brand anyway, but there's no Coke Zero that, has, uh, that says it's zero, but there's sweetness. Where did that sweetness come? Remember even sweetness, that is sugar. And we're looking at the fructose and uh, fructose part. So even in the sweetness, there is sugar also. So that is not a zero soda. I wouldn't say if it, it if it tasted like water, then I would have considered it. Uh, the other thing, whole grains. I think whole grains we have cereals everywhere. That there's no excuse to do a uh, refined uh, refined food because we have cereals like distributed everywhere. You can buy your uh, you can buy your maize and go to the portion meal. There are even portion meals around. So you can buy your grains and go to the portion meal. If you want uji, you can buy, instead of buying the refined one, you can buy and then go to the portion meal. So uh, something else I wanted to, to have a clarification on is the units of alcohol. Because we have different types of alcohol. You find maybe a take beer or wine or whiskey. So how do I know my limit? That is my question. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Monica. Now, uh, remember we talk about alcohol give you around, uh, around a gram of it give you now around nine calories. So the, mess, the best idea is we need to be doing a limitation because I also mentioned that uh, uh, around 45 ml of whiskey, that is almost like one pot, give you around 116 calories. So already that one is high in sugar levels. So the main key concern is try as much as possible because if you do a lot of wines, those are, those are high, uh, wines give you like a glass, give you around, uh, around 96 calories. When you come to things like uh, the Guinness, those are high in terms of the sugar because they are made from the valleys. So you try as much as possible to restrict. But the main key point is in alcohol, remember nothing is safe. So try as much as possible to avoid if possible. Because by the end of the day, if I take alcohol and uh, remember it doesn't support life, it doesn't support exercise. So it goes directly to the, uh, to the blood circulation. And now when you're having like insulin response is very low, that means that that energy will not be utilized. 
So the men, when we say one per serving, if I'm taking like a glass of wine, that's okay, but I know I don't have to have two glasses. And also the frequency also matters. So if I take a glass of wine once a week, then that one is fine. If I do it on a daily basis, then that one is wrong because by the end of the day, kidogo kidogo kibaba. So we have to try as much as possible to limit. So if you can't avoid, then try to limit yourself. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kibet, for that clarification. You can go ahead, Frank. Um, just a second. So uh, thank you, everyone, who has uh, participated in this uh, webinar. Um, we look forward to get, uh, seeing you on... Uh, ...other webinars that we host. Uh, um, basically, uh, this has been an informative uh, session. Thank you, Willie, uh, for your professional opinions and uh, uh, insights into how we can use diet to manage our conditions. And um, anyone who has a question that um, we've not, maybe we've not been able to allow them to talk or say anything. Um, anyone, I've not seen any hand up. But basically, if you have any questions, uh, kindly come on to the application and you can talk to a professional who will be able to give you the insights or the uh, actual or factual information that you will require, that's number one. Uh, secondly, um, after this, uh, there are some videos that will play uh, uh, around that uh, you will learn from. There are so many other things that are going on, including COVID-19, current, uh, the current pandemic. And uh, with this, uh, you realize that uh, in hypertension and uh, diabetes management, uh, we've had many people um, uh, actually uh, uh, default on their medication, on their visits to the facilities because of fear of uh, contracting an infection in a facility. Kindly note, you can also see a doctor online using the Sasa Doctor application. And with that, uh, you are able to uh, get your diagnosis, uh, get your medication refills, and we'll be able to deliver the medication to wherever you are. So that enables you to have uh, uh, an element of continuity of care to ensure that you don't default, or you don't have what I called targeted organ damage uh, that can easily bring up uh, an issue of uh, organ failure. Uh, with that, um, I hope uh, you've learned one or two things from this uh, webinar. Thank you very much. I take it over.